This set is a Hacker Avimore. It's from the mid-1970s. I don't think it's regarded as one of the classic Hacker models. Um, it doesn't have the nice little turntable that you can use for aligning your AM antenna. And it has this rather odd sort of grill formation on the front, which seems to have got pushed in a little bit. But I did quite like the look of it. And Oh, well, the other thing that's a bit basic compared to the other hackers, if you compare it to the uh, Sovereign that we looked at before, which has separate bass and treble controls, this has just one of those little top cut controls on it and doesn't have a proper tone control at all. Um, but I quite like the look of it. I like the finish of it. It obviously needs a bit of a clean up, and, but all the bits are there. And as um, Radio Crunchy, I think, said last week in his uh, live video, you have to be careful with these things because if any of the bits like the aerial, the knobs, or particularly with hackers, this back grill are missing, then you're never going to get it to look good, really. Whereas if it's just a bit mucky, well, we can clean it up, can't we? Now, that presumes that the electronics is good, but I've had a listen to it, and it is pretty good, really. So that's it on FM with the tone not cut. That's it with the tone cut in. And if I do something similar on me, uh, FM. We won't leave that on for too long. Um, yeah, it does sound pretty good. It may not be, as I said, one of the best sounding hackers or one of the best loved out there, but I quite like it. So I'm just going to do a bit of a refurbishment of it, really. Other thing with hackers is the ones I've seen have generally come apart by uh, taking the back of the box off, but that's not what happens here. Um, to get the battery in, you have to pull this wooden bit out here, and it just sits in as a, a sort of push fit, really. Uh, PP9 battery goes in there, and then you can see it's a bit more like the old Roberts thing inside, and um, it looks to like you have to take the handle screws out and that will release the rest of it and obviously take the knobs off the front so let's do that And there's something still holding it in. I'm not sure what. Maybe there's a, another screw in the back I have to take out. Oh, it's the speaker wires, of course. I should have thought of that, shouldn't I? Uh, let's get those out. It's quite nice modular construction inside, really. Um, like a lot of the hackers are, you've got your clearly your um, RF module here, your, your um, sorry, your FM RF module obviously here, which is all case, your AM stuff, your audio amplifier. Um, as it sounds good, I'm not going to go around just changing caps. I don't see the point. I know a lot of people say you should always change them, but it sounds okay. And I do notice it's got these old. Um, lock fit transistors which have been known to give problems in the past and like i said i'm not going to interfere with things that work um i have plenty of problems interfering with things that don't work and trying to make them work and i don't want to do work i don't need to do as i said i'd like to tighten this up a little bit if i can it feels a little insecure there um i think that should just be a case of tightening up yeah if you look there that that nut there just needs a spanner on it and tighten it up a bit and that should do that job. Now, does the front panel come out to be cleaned separately? I think it might do if I detach this aerial here completely. So uh, let's let's try that. Just lift off. It must be better access for cleaning this up. I just need to make sure we don't lose that bit there because that's obviously quite important. 
Now with these things, when they've got these stickers on, they're a bit of a pain to get off. The BBC sent them out to go with the 1970s wavelength changes. And if you notice, the front of the cabinet has got it. I've got the sticker as well that they sent out with it. I'm never really clear whether, I'm not, I'm not sure whether to leave these on. If they were in better condition, or if that was in better condition, I probably would, but I could probably always print any number of those off the internet. Um, but these can be a bit of a nuisance to get off. I know they're also still, you know, even though they were corrections of what was on the original scale, times have since changed because these two, where it's marking Radio 2 and our 5 Live, Radio 1 isn't there anymore, that's Talk Sport. Radio 3 isn't there anymore, that's um, Absolute. Um, and, you know, Radio 4 is still correct. Or, so, um, I, I don't know, I think I'll just clean the whole thing off. It looks like the lettering is on this side, which is good, which means that we can clean this side without destroying any of the lettering. Yes, the BBC has committed a number of acts of vandalism against the radio industry over the years, but those diamond stickers for the wavelength changes are one of the worst, I think. Um, that's come up fairly well now. Um, I mean, to be honest, if you're not absolutely um, obsessive about it, putting isopropyl alcohol on them will remove all the legends from the stickers and you'll just have a little film, film bit sitting on top. If you want to actually take the film off as well which i did then you have to just use anything sharper than a fingernail is going to wreck the scale um so it's a very slow process but there you go that's come up fairly nicely another thing i find interesting about this it's also got an iba a bbc and iba set of markings here for local radio and if you look at the uh, figures here so you have um all the old um ILR frequencies so you've got uh, 210 which is Thames Valley 194 which is capital or I think the Radio City if you're in Liverpool um, and um, you know all those 261 which is Piccadilly so all these are like the um, ILR local radio frequencies obviously the same frequency is reused in different areas and then they, they put the uh, BBC local um, frequencies on top here so sort of markers so that rather than cluttering the dial-up, because you'd know what your local frequency was, I suppose, so you could tune it to that as well. Um, just on, you know, use a separate local radio tuning scale. So, um, and the other thing I'd, uh, I didn't mention, because unlike the Hacker Sovereign that we looked at before, which maxed out at 101 megahertz, which nowadays would exclude a lot of stations, this one actually, it doesn't go up to the full 108, but it does go at least go up to 104, which will get you most things at least around here. So, um, that's done. Now it's time to clean up some of the other bits. These knobs seem to have been designed very carefully to trap as much dirt as possible over the years. But I think we've got most of it off um, with the aid of toothpicks and uh, cocktail sticks and uh, cleaner. Um, so they're looking a lot better now. I don't like trying to remove these sort of um, button things. I, it's supposedly it's possible, but... The, the problem with doing that is that if they come off and you break them, you've absolutely had it. So I prefer to just go around them with the cotton bud, really. I think that's a much safer way of keep cleaning those up while the top's off. Now with the cabinet, it's generally okay, but a bit grubby. But we have this additional feature of this grill having got a bit pushed in. So that's one I'm going to have to try and uh, tackle. I'm hoping that the grill um, will just drop out if I pull these two decorative strips off and that I don't have to remove the speaker or anything like that. Um, getting them back on, of course, might be more of a challenge, but we can... We'll come to that. <laughs> Cross that bridge when we come to it, I suppose.
it feels like the answer to this is to sort of iron it, really. Um, although I don't think it'd take very well to ironing. I think uh, maybe just um, wash it and then flatten it under something. Well, taking that off does in fact reveal that the speaker is in a particularly precarious state. Um, it doesn't look as if it's got long for this world, does it? But it sounded okay. Um, so that's quite a delicate thing. So I don't know if something's got in there. I mean, it doesn't feel like anything could have got in there and chewed it. Um, so I'm not sure how it's got like that. I'm surprised it still makes any noise at all, to be fair. Um, not sure what to do about that. Um, I don't think I've got anything that will really seal that up. And uh, I wonder if we might end up at some point having to get a replacement speaker for it. Um, so this is one of those things, you know, you, you think this radio is in pretty good condition. There's nothing needs doing to it. And then you, you take the front off and you see something like this. Well, overall, I'd say this has been a success. It's cleaned up quite nicely. Uh, getting the grill back, uh, I haven't completely stuck that down properly, but uh, to be honest, I'm going to have to take it off again to get the speaker back again, because I'm, I'm going to have to change that speaker, really, even though it does work. I, I'm sure it would sound even better if it had a speaker that wasn't full of holes. Um, there's a little bit of cleaning up needed here, which I didn't quite manage to get right. Um, but I've done most of it, and it looks a lot um, happier, really. Um, the grill, the um, front panels come up really nicely. Um, put the you know usual um, stat anti-static cleaner and um, surface treatment on these um, imitation leather bits. Um, what else? Oh yeah, a bit of um, Mr. Sheen on the sides here. And um, yeah, I think it looks really good now. It looks a lot better than it did. And. Uh, originally from the northeast, but now living in Cambridgeshire, and they've just released an album of tracks inspired by northeast song writers. Uh, I've spoken to him a little bit already on this evening's show about some of the tracks on the album, and still sounds pretty good. So um, yeah, although it's not one of the classic hackers, as we said, I think it looks quite nice, and I think it's um, it's becoming one of my favourites already.